Hi everyone, today I have a special guest, Mr. Dakota Franzen. Normally you know him with his twin work companion and friend uh, from uh, an amazing podcast, Bold and Bonkers. And I really recommend to go and check the, the videos. Uh, there's some amazing, amazing stuff. I wanted to interview Dakota today about his story because Dakota has an, in, an incredible story with evidences. Mm -hmm. Dakota, how are you? Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I'm I'm excited to do this. It's about time we you know, get, get the story out there because it just keeps getting weirder. Yes, I bet. I bet. Because people like you who bring evidences, you know, um, things are getting weirder. For, for, for oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wh why wouldn't you um, start by um, telling us how did this journey start for you with the, the, the story you are uh, disclosing to the public? How did everything start? It's hard to honestly pinpoint a good starting point because it just seems like it's been going on for as long as I can remember. I mean, the first incident that was that happened that was beyond reasonable doubt that something happened was uh, when I was about five years old. And there was one night where I just went to bed, nothing out of the ordinary. The next morning, I woke up. 30 miles away from home, thankfully at my grandparents' house, and no one knew how I got in. Now, it wasn't that odd for me to be dropped off with them because my mom always worked and my dad wasn't really around, so they would always babysit me. But they had no clue who I was even in the building. All the doors were locked, all the windows were locked, and shortly after I woke up, my mom is calling them on the phone freaking out because she doesn't know where I am so obviously unless I somehow managed to walk overnight at five years old 30 miles something clearly happened you know over life it just continued to get weirder and weirder I've always had some sort of connection with psychic abilities it's just seems genetic. By the age of two, there was one day where I walked up to my stepmom. I put my hand up to her stomach and said, my baby sister's in here. Obviously, they were like, okay, didn't think much of it. Next day, my stepmom feels ill. She goes to the doctor. She's pregnant with a little girl. Wow. wow. But it didn't really take the more interesting route until i was about a age of 12 so i will save your discretion advice because it gets kind of dark here there was uh an incident a lot of stuff going on that kind of put my head into a dark place and i tried to take my own life when it happens i was in a closet and all of a sudden i saw this blue light just emerge out of nowhere it honestly blinded me for a few seconds then as my eyes started to adjust i just see this blue void it kind of looked like i was underwater the way it, light seemed to move around me it's the best way i don't describe it then a few moments go by i'm not able to move any part of my body you know, except my eyes. There's this man that appears in front of me. Now, from what I could tell, he kind of had long, you know, about shoulder length, kind of dark blonde hair. I couldn't really make out any details of the face. Had some sort of white outfit on, but his image was blurry. He walks up to me and says, Dakota, there's someone here to see you. He steps aside, and sure enough, there's this little girl standing behind him, just bawling her eyes out. Oh, wow. 
first thing I noticed about this little girl is that she looks an awful lot like me. She runs up to me, gives me a hug, and says, Daddy, please don't do it. She gives me a kiss on the cheek. I remember vaguely the kind of blue veil dissipating. And I swear I've seen other people there, but by the time I could like really register any details, I was back in my room like nothing happened. Obviously clueless as to how to process that because I was only 12. If I had a daughter out there, somebody has some explaining to do, you know? <laughs> you were true. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so I took an interest in the paranormal, tried researching anything, um, and the only thing that I could find that was somewhat close to my story was you know, parents that did have visits from their children before they were born, but the case is usually involved the mother already being pregnant. Mm. So again, more questions. Yeah. It wouldn't be about till almost 10, 11 years later when all of a sudden after several people were attacked by a dark being and they started messaging me that they started seeing images of a little girl showing up who looked like me that the no idea that she may have been at least partially Pleiadian came up. How did you come to understand this, this, these events later on? What, what is your take on that? I, I honestly, part of me still wants to doubt it, but it's at least 20 other people have come forward with the exact same description of this little girl. It looked to be about six years old, but her, the way her mentality kind of presented that she may have been three. Now, if this was in fact my daughter, it was likely that she would have been mistaken for older than her age because that's been a problem I've had all my life. After this being attacked, I was with uh, this international group of paranormal investigators that unfortunately disbanded shortly after this incident took place. Probably for the best when uh, you realize everything that happened. But when I was able to actually create a picture of this little girl. Because so many people had come forward. Now, I also had a bit of a cheat up my sleeve. I have an uncle on my mother's side who I get mistaken for all the time. His kids actually call me dad because we're so much alike. He, his, My uncle and I look like we could pass off as twins. Wow. So I pull out a picture of my little cousins. I show it to them. They start freaking out like, Dakota, how the hell do you have that picture? That's my cousins. What do you mean? It's like, that's the little girl I kept seeing. Now, after this attack, some people had been affected so much, they had to seek medical help. One gentleman who was dealing with cancer treatments on and off, his cancer came back pretty aggressively. Another, she had to seek mental health help. Shortly after they all said they saw this little girl, within a couple of weeks, they all started getting better. Interestingly enough, the girl that went to the mental health hospital, she did a podcast for a while. There was this one day where she sends me a little audio clip. They're doing the show regularly. Then all of a sudden you hear a little girl's voice in the background, sounding like she was ready for bed saying, Mommy, I recognized that voice right away. So an idea popped in my head. I was still kind of working off of the some sort of weird time travel incident where I took the woman's photo, tried to find one that had a bit more direct into the camera. They used one of those... Uh, 
you know, what would your child look like programs that the program's called face app. It was all over the news a while ago because people realized yeah. that developers were out of Russia. I use that to combine our photos, decrease the age, you know, added, you know, a couple features, wider eyes, a little baby fat, then sent the woman the photo without telling her how I made it hmm. because it's, I could not think of any easy way to say, hey, uh, I made this using you. <laughs> she messaged me right back because that little girl kept showing up. And she just messaged me back saying, Dakota, that's her. That's exactly who I saw. Okay. It wasn't until we did a show with a psychic medium friend of ours, Chris and I did, and I showed her that photo and I can show you later that she brought up, up was like, oh, she looks Pleiadian. What? And then she goes to explain, yeah, yeah, Pleiadians tend to be very sexual in nature. And I'm just, my eyes was like, I was 12 when she first showed up. You're insinuating some very bad things here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how yes. do you, like, how do you process that? There's not exactly a therapy for this type of thing. And after she I, she pointed that out to me and I started, you know, looking up more, all of a sudden there would be more craft showing up. There would be voice recordings coming forward, you know, saying Pleiades, you know, hi, dad, miss you. About March, the beginning of March of 2021, after these attacks took place, I was shown... This a woman with that same little girl over her shoulder in what looked like kind of a futuristic hospital room had kind of a view, kind of like your background, actually. Then the little girl notices I'm there and says, Daddy, come meet my new baby brother. I look out the window and I don't know why, but the first words that came out of my mouth were, am I on Mars? Because that's what the scenery looked like. It looked like, you know, photos from the Mars rovers. And that was just the first thing that popped in my head. I think there was some sort of alarm that was going off. That I felt that this hand grabbed me by my shoulders. Like, we got to get you out of here now. He's like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. I want to be, I want to see the baby. I come back, then I get dropped off in my bed so hard that part of my bed actually goes through the wall. So I don't know what happened. <laughs> hmm. I have I have a few questions here. So one observation I have is that there is obviously a very, very strong genetic marker in your actual earth family biological family with this body mm -hmm. that you are in extremely strong genetic marker now um i know by experience then when a soul incarnates into a body they need a, a dna frequency match for instance mm -hmm. a soul coming from the pleiades needs a percentage quite a percentage of pleiadian dna in the body for the, the match that, that works, you mm -hmm. know. You say then this little girl looks like you so much. So that would mean that there is the same genetic marker. Mm -hmm. That's one observation. Now, what do you, th how does this resonate? It's one of my hypotheses, just as you speak, this comes, you know, ideas. Um, what do you think about time travel that in the future, you, well, maybe actually now, but in the future regarding when you were 12, which can be just mm -hmm. as soon as now, you were having these kids, the little girl and then the baby boy. And you needed not to take your life at 12 because these kids would have never come. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's, you know, a track I can, I can suggest you what do you think about that 
I honestly don't know. Mm. I mean, there's so much that's still up in the air. I'm half the time when I get these visitations, I'm still trying to sort out am I is there just a projection I'm being shown or am I actually there? You know? It could very well be. Or a lot of the sense that I've gotten from them is that obviously I was important to them regardless. So they wanted to make sure that they met me because later on I would try little, little channeling sessions, just anything I could think of off the top of my head, try to figure it out. I would say, well, you know, when are you guys going to be born? When are you going to be here? The, they would only give me a year and would usually be alternate between 2024 and 2025. And right now, with everything going on in the world, that certainly tracks. Yeah. As far as genetic marker, I mean, maybe. From what they've told me is that before I came here, I was from Talihara. Okay. And I do know that from from your book, The Cedars, when you start talking about his bloodlines that you actually mentioned one of my ancestors, Mary Stewart. So it certainly tracks. Yes. Yes. Um, there are many, many elements of the same puzzle that they can be put together. Something that I think there's a clue there with Mars because, mm -hmm. well, we all agree to to make kids. You need to be there physically. <laughs> so you're really exactly. going there physically. You are, it's not projection, or maybe not all the time. Maybe sometimes you have projections. I don't know, but what I know for sure after what he said is that you physically go somewhere on board a ship or on board Mars, where there's this base there, um, mm -hmm. physically. So that's why you're able to have kids with. Uh, a woman not of mm -hmm. this earth and these kids look like you because you have a strong genetic marker would you agree with that it was pretty obvious when my bed came through the wall one time that i came back after finding out about my son that yeah i was physically leaving so that's why i started actually trying to plant little re recorders and cameras on me just to see if i can catch who was taking me only a couple times I've gotten lucky to catch him on voice. Yeah. That's what interests me. Olivia? Baby girl, is that you? You okay? Quality. I am looking right at a ship. I am looking right at a ship. I have fresh ones. Okay. I mean, the first one that came to mind that really made this stand out was that there was this one night, and all of a sudden, with this recording, just and it was only like a 20 second segment, it was one of those sleep talking apps. All of a sudden, out of the blue, there was static. I wasn't playing any white noise machines or anything like that, didn't have any electronics on. And the voice that came through that said, we are always watching over you. And it was a woman kind of had a little bit of a Gaelic accent to it. And I was just like, okay. 
every time I go to come to have maybe let the doubts in my mind when that something's not happening or I'm just going crazy, there's something new that comes forward. It's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I remember um, I've been interviewed uh, two, three times on your channel, Bold and Bonkers, mm -hmm. with your colleague. And every time something happens that in the background, when, when we start, start talking about your stuff, there's something in the background, the light changes, or there is some statics, or we hear something. And I was very impressed. Very impressed. Yeah, I've been monitoring that, and that's why I actually have a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little green light there. It's supposed to be like an EMF to see if, to try to help measure if anything actually happens, but not cause a lot of noise to interrupt the interview. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's quite impressive. Um do you what what recollection do you have or memories or visuals of your partner uh off world partner i remember her showing up several times when i was a kid especially that incident when i was five it by all means, it looked like I, there it was an abduction attempt, but something came to grab me. I remember being on the ship very similar to the one you described in your first book. And I was asking this woman, say, hey, can you drop me off at my grandma's? I don't you know, that was somewhere I felt safe. And. I just, she had the same eyes as that little girl. And she was a little hesitant at first, but she agreed, obviously, because that's where I ended up waking up. She was kind of, you know, had the big eyes. She had her face almost kind of like the real life version of, a Japanese cartoon character in a way. You know, the, the big eyes, kind of the roundish face, pointed chin. Old cartoon that I used to watch all the time because it reminded me of her. As she got older, she developed a little bit more pronounced facial structure. I actually was able to use the image I rendered of my daughter. I took a bit of advice from one of the shows we had you on with is that if there was a soul connection, you had a wife. I believe this was the show that involved the infamous cheating question that people still asking me about <laughs> that. If there was that connection, chances are the relationships in this life, you're going to try to look for stuff that reminds you of that partner. It's like, all right. I started thinking about all the, Girls I've been with, you know, celebrity crushes and all that, trying to think of all the facial structures they may have had similar. Because I had the idea, what if I took my daughter's image, you know, slowly added those features to where it would essentially take as much of my genetics appearance out, see what happens. There was one point I ended up stopping because my heart just sank because I was like, holy crap, that's her. And I honestly started breaking down into tears wow. because it's like I, I was sensation. Best way I would know to describe is like cleaning out the attic and you find a old picture of a loved one that passed away, you know? The, the way you described her face, she she really looks like my friend Myra from Sirius B. Uh, they have nearly triangular faces with a small chin, mm -hmm. high cheekbones, big eyes. Mm -hmm. And that just the Sirius B uh, races. They are like this, like Asian type looking, but not kind of. Yeah, ma manga would be mm -hmm. a good description. 
small chin, big eyes, small nose, um, a long neck, uh, grace, graceful, you know, that would mm -hmm. be them. So um, what's interesting is that these uh, people, the Tashkiru, uh, they have very, very strong, strong relationship with the Pleiadians. Uh, it can be the Tal, Tal Ihara, mm -hmm. it's Tal as well, it can be the Ahir, mm -hmm. uh, and it's two uh, people who are really uh, together and genetically they're a very good match as well. They, they're very... Uh, so you see often couples with both races, you know, together, mixed couples. Um, how do you... How does it resonate to you that she could be from the serious system or you rather think she's from the Pleiades? What, what, how do you, what do you say? I almost feel like an ass because I never really questioned it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, but honestly, it, it does line up. I'm, I may find out later today, you know, once we get off of here, but. It could very well be it, because what I do know is that she was, we did not come from the same planets as when I left Talihara, she was there waiting for me. Wow. Interesting. Because uh, with what I remember happening, I was kind of needing some uh, someone to kind of draw me in, because... From what I recall, I had to absolutely leave, or people were going to start coming for me. Oh, you know that makes sense because Talihara is a planet that is uh, still to this day um, under the uh, tyranny. It's mm -hmm. it's called the Tal Shiar, and they're very uh, very hard government, and they work. They have been working with the reptilians for a long time. The Sikars. And the, the populations of Talihara, they are oppressed and many escape, many flee to other star systems. And um, how does that resonate with you? There was one night I actually questioned, it was like once, you know, you, I came to you and established that apparently I work with Thor Han. Yes. I was like, all right, what brought me to the Federation? So there was this one night I was showing this. It was kind of like a memory playback. Almost every time I've gone up, it's like when I try to recall it, it feels like I'm trying to recall a movie that I've only seen being sped up, you know? But I remember it was, a, it was dark out. I remember hearing these kids screaming and there was a Sikar about to corner them and I attacked it because I was not did not want those kids to get hurt I drew enough of its attention to where the kids could start running I, I made sure to stay with them we found some kind of pod or ship main thing I remember is that it was mainly silver it had kind of a door on the side that you entered from and as we got in start trying to get it to take off that thing stuck its head inside and I just remember hearing this it banging on top of it it was determined to get those kids We realized that we weren't exactly going to be able to push it out. So we started to force the door shut on its neck and ended up decapitating it. And then there was this moment right as it started to realize what was happening. I swore it saw a change in the eyes. It didn't have the reptile sort of eyes. The, the eyes looked more human. And it's just that image just stuck with me as we got out of there. I tried justifying like I had to do it, had to protect those kids, but seeing those eyes was like, what if they weren't always 
these big monsters, you know? Yeah, that's so that that what you do you recall was it when you were on Talihara and trying to escape, or was it during a work you were performing? You remember performing with the Federation while working with them? I'm honestly still trying to establish a timeline, yeah. but it from all accounts and I've managed to talk to my wife and she has managed to help validate some things. It's like apparently it was that was my escape from Talihara. And that's what led me to join the Federation because that was probably the safest option. But yeah. still get out there. So I knew part of me didn't want to abandon the situation, but at the same time before I left, I do recall there being some sort of confrontation. Like, I tried to go back for a family, but they realized what I didn't. They just started saying, what the, what is wrong with you? Why did you do that? You know, get out, go. Yeah. I have a friend. His name is Akvaru. He was in the same situation as yourself. He's from Talihara, and he escaped. And he, he thought that the best way to save his family was not to fight by front his government, was to escape and seek help uh, to the Federation. And he's been fighting as a mercenary with the Federation, fighting the reptilians, fighting the Tal Shiar. Um, and then he, they trained him because he knew very well the situation. They trained him to become a diplomat an ambassador, and now they sent him back to Talihara. And because he's an ambassador, he's a diplomat, he is untouchable. So mm. it's now in the process of negotiating with the Tal Shiar that they cut with the reptilians forever. So the Federation has to bring a better deal. And that's, you know, difficult. Yeah. Difficult. Yeah, when I saw that you were doing updates on Talihara, I made sure to attend that webinar. It's like, oh, hold him! <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so situation will will improve uh the federation mm -hmm. won't leave it they they are going to fight to get to free these people now um you now we we've been talking about you met thorhan so and you wrote to me and thorhan could confirm so could you tell us about this please all right so there was a young lady we actually had on our show a week after one of your appearances. She does a website called Soto Voce Vault. She references you a lot. So I figured it's like, hey, uh, you want to come on our show? Elena's a friend of ours. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, like, absolutely. She was there watching the show and she said, yeah, I'll come on. We did the interview and went well. We actually had a lot of stuff happen to where she initially used a pseudonym to kind of go with a masked vigilante approach. She was going with it. I ended up revealing her real name on air, which apparently caught her attention enough to where she felt like she could trust Chris and I after the show to disclose what she thought was a false memory. It's basically, she remembered it would have been about Christmas time as a young girl. She remembers being taken out of her house for some reason, then seeing a moose bucking outside of her house. And that's not necessarily something a moose will do because of their size. They'll ju usually just charge. And, because she got into researching this type of stuff, she felt like it may have been a false memory. So she wanted to get Chris and I's opinion on it. And right away, we could tell that, yes, she had something happen. We disclosed details of the dress, you know, kind of the house she lived in. It sparked enough of an interest that we kept in touch. 
all of a sudden one night, I remember being shown the it was almost again, it was like a memory playback where I fly down from the Excelsior. I remember going in towards the Great Lakes here in the US, then focusing on this house and just staying outside. I watch what looked like two X fives carrying out a little girl and they're running some sort of device over over her. Everybody who in that group was like, was getting pissed off. It's like, we wanted to do a tech then and there, but we needed to know. It was like, we were waiting for them to take the girl directly to their ship. So I guess it would be a matter of jurisdiction. You know, we couldn't fight there on the ground. What was that? The, the people that? just went like this. There was a voice that just came through. Yes. Huh. Wow. That was weird. It, it literally sounded like somebody trying to come through on an old walkie-talkie. Yes. It, it's possible when uh, Thorhan says sometimes he when he speaks to me via the implant, mm -hmm. you can hear it because of the statics, their interference. So um, that was your side. But I, I heard a woman's voice. guess it would be a matter of jurisdiction you know we couldn't fight there on the ground we couldn't fight there on fire. it did kind of sound like a woman honestly kind of reminded me of like old police radios yes huh may have been okay heard. yes that's interesting that's interesting yeah that's interesting Every time we talk, we open Pandora's box. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. what, what what happened next? Um... Once we realized they were in the ship, we infiltrated. We took them out. And I remember focusing on the little girl just trying to get her to calm down because obviously... She's going to be pretty spooked. Remember we took her up, you know, showed her around a little bit to help her calm down, brought her home. But someone else took her back inside. Then I remember getting back on the ship. I remember walking up to a man that looked exactly how, like Thorhan in your drawings. We got to talking about it. And he's all of a sudden he goes to bring up his hand like this, yeah, to my forehead, and I jerk back like, "Whoa, what, whoa, whoa, why are you doing that?" He does like, that. <laughs> Very annoying. Yeah, no. Every time I go to talk I about, it, I swear I see that smirk of his. <laughs> and he's like, "You're getting ready to go down to Earth. You're getting ready to come down here soon. You, we got to protect the kid." He's like, but I don't want to forget this. I want to make remember why I came down. He's just like, don't worry. You will. Just remember the moose. Then he gives me a little playful wink. That's what exactly. He did. That's what he did. Exactly. Ex that's exactly what he did. <laughs> and then it wipes your memory. Yeah. Every time he goes, uh, nope. Then don't touch me. <laughs> I know it. It's just like the Stop. second I saw that in your book, I was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> stop doing that, Don. <laughs> <It's> not funny." <laughs> well, 
it's like I said, then I remembered right away that <laughs> the woman said that she saw the image of a fucking moose. And I, as soon as I came back, I jerked up and I was like, I know who that kid was. So I made sure the second I had an opportunity, I that's when I wrote to you to try to validate because I had around that same time, I had also done one of those uh, kind of a self regression session. I took the class offered by Tony Rodriguez, like you recommended. Then I actually got a name. It was like you were a Larry in tenant or something like that. Tried to spell it out to the best as earthly possible, but you know, got, got a description almost like I saw myself in a mirror up there. Saw the kind of the silvery uniform that reminded me of uh, Val Thor in a way. So I gathered that description. I was like, all right, I better make sure I talk to Elena first before I say anything. <laughs> That's a tall uniforms. They are silvery white. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So listening to you again, because we've been talking three males, and, but you know, when taking the story uh, from the start and just chatting uh, real time, I start, to me, start, it starts to be clear that you, you were regressed back into Earth uh, as a child. So it's yourself. It's like, it's like you have, you have a double of yourself, but it's, it's, it's you. It's not a double. Mm -hmm. It's time, time thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like someone's going to do a 20 and back, except it's, uh, this wasn't a 20 and back. Or maybe it was. I don't think so. Um, and, you know, so wh while you're still doing your life up there you, until you will be one day regressed to age kid, you still have yourself up there and you're here. Do you think it's that? <laughs> on, on, on. Honestly, I, I think so, because there's been a few times where I actually remember waking up in one of those stasis pods. <laughs> I had. I have memories of my family members that I sh should not have. It's like, I have memories of my grandparents when on their first dates, I had no clue what they were or how to ask until my grandfather passed away. And I, we'd start going through all family photos to show at his funeral. And I was just like, wait a sec. Why do I remember being here? It was almost like before I came down and actually laid in that stasis pod, it was like I was being shown the bloodline coming together to make this body. Yes. Yes. But also when you are upstairs, as I say, mm -hmm. you also have this body. So that's 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 very interesting that you could have been age regressed to uh, this age, but it's the same body, the same you. That's interesting. Yes. Mm. Yes, confused. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? I think there are some elements that are going to come to you that you still don't have, and then it would be like, oh, of course. <laughs> I usually get that from reading your books. <laughs> That's great. To be, um, to be completely honest, it's like, second I found your books and, and just started reading through them, I was like, why do I remember this? And it's like, oh, because I was up there. Got it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And you know when there are people who uh, contact me and say, oh, I met Thorhan. So, you know, in the doubt, I always ask him. And like 99% of the time he said, no, this person didn't see me. It's either someone else or either a delusion. But in your case, he said, yes, yes, everything's true. I met him and that happened. Yeah. So I can confirm. 
Yeah. Okay, good. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. That's why that makes all the rest like super interesting. <laughs> I know. It's like, I mean, I was driving around in a family member's car because mine was in the shop. And the second I got your email back confirming it, I almost put my feet through the floor of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that that's very impressive. So, I think more elements will, will come, and uh, confirming things. But we so to go back to the bigger picture. How, if you had to write your story from the perspective of the guy from Talihara until that moment where, when we are talking, speaking with each other, how would you write this story? Like, what did this guy do? Um, how he became to be in this body? What, what, what thread would you tell if you had to write about it? That's actually something I've been trying to work on because there's been people I've been asking, oh, have you written books on, on your stuff? I would love to hear more. It's like, yes, I have. I've actually have written a book before, but the, my approach for that was kind of letters to my younger self addressing you know certain points in life that you know affect me. You know, just more meant to be more of a self help mental health approach to it. I didn't really go into a lot of the ET side of things because I hadn't, well, one, I hadn't remembered as much as I do now, but I was also trying to make sure I understood the implications of what it all meant. But for now, I'm trying to put together a somewhat linear timeline of events. Yeah. So I'm not having to bounce around, you know, jump into, so I don't have to, you know, start, and, you know, point x and jump back to point a to, uh, so people understand why x was important yeah but obviously if time travels a factor then i don't know <laughs> so you the origin point is you were on talihara you escaped you joined the federation and from that that point onwards Time travel is involved. Incarnation is involved. That transfer of soul in this bloodline that you occupy. It's it sounds to me like um, you travel back in time to the. You you know you know because the Tal they live longer than humans, so mm -hmm. you were already working with the Federation when your grandparents were dating. That's what mm -hmm. I suppose. And then you said, okay, I will at one stage incarnate into this bloodline to perform a mission, which you are doing now. But mm -hmm. then you have a wife and kids. So you came back in time to incarnate into this bloodline. But the real you is still upstairs. Does that make sense? Absolutely. There's no other way to really put it. This is a beautiful story. Beautiful story. I know, it's just for all the times, and I've realized over the years that they, my wife and kids, have been trying to get my attention for some time, and it's just wasn't until recently that I learned where to listen. I mean, they've even helped step in to obviously help take care of others when I've come across some pretty nasty cases. And well, that was where enough of the walls got torn down to where we can finally say, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm your husband. Yeah, I'm your wife. And I'll say that when people go to read the books, be very careful. Because it's not going to be a whole 
love and light like the new age approach try to say it it gets pretty dark and there's been situations i've dealt with where people have lost their lives yeah that's Down here. <laughs> yeah yeah reality is not like all love and light sometimes i hear people criticizing my my work because they say oh the pleiadians they're all love and light they do not they don't do war it's all mickey mouse disney licorn unicorns upstairs yeah. it's like ash uh ashtar in glittery suits and <laughs> jesus driving spaceships you know this kind of shit. no it's not <laughs> It's fucking war. Sorry for my language. Hello. <laughs> no. I keep trying to tell people, and it's just. With reptilians eating people, with uh, sh sh spaceships blowing up, it's, it's, it's war. It's bloody, messy. You know? Yeah. Yeah, there's been plenty of points where war came down here. And... Yeah. I mean, I've had weird static. Events happened to where, let's see, a friend of mine, he was actually, he was actually out of Blue Ridge, Virginia. When he and I first met, all of a sudden he had some sort of garbled static interference coming through on his end. Sounded like an, something out of an alien invasion movie. Now, he also had issues with Sasquatch attacking his property. Apparently there was a certain tree that his family left for him and, for the local tribe, I guess would be the appropriate term for it. And he cut it down despite their warning, which not something you want to do. And they, you basically, you would say that he would not leave the outside of his house at night with, without packing a gun. You know, it, if they're pissed off enough, that doesn't do much. <laughs> There was a point during this transmission, for lack of a better word, where it says, we want Dakota Franson. I was like, did that thing just say my name? <laughs> this this was actually February, I believe, 15th of 2021 when this happened. And I said, the group I was with, and it's actually how I met my co-host, Chris, we got into dealing with this talking about a situation of being known as the hat man and he didn't like us talking about him and attacked while on camera oh wow oh yeah okay and yes there's a video of this i managed to save it even though that channel has been taken down because it did end up with a gentleman being possessed and for some reason whenever my name got mentioned he would flinch that's when i realized i had an opening it was like i can take this thing down i come on i said i know who you are i know what you want get out of him now you fought me at first but eventually we broke the connection and that's when my family apparently started helping step in to help everybody recover. Oh, there's so many. We can feel that there are so many, so many paranormal um, events that happen in your life. It's like, I have this feeling it's constant. It's nonstop. It's all the time. Pretty much. I mean, just just last week, when uh, here in the U.S., all of a sudden, all of our cell phone networks have been acting up, and it's not just in one area. It seems all over the place, and there's some rumors that it could be connected to some of the train derailments that have been going on lately, as well as some of the financial issues, but that's another discussion. I would be driving to work, and all of a sudden, I see a craft flying around one of the cell phone towers. It is constant, and I've honestly almost caused a couple car accidents because I was trying to take photos. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you still um, teleport? Let's use the word upstairs in the on the Excelsior because you are on the you are on the Excelsior, or are you, are you still? From what, I, from what I can tell, I've been on both the Excelsior and possibly the Moon Base. Just, just judging by how how the Earth looked from outside, and there, yeah, it's almost at least twice a week that something happens and I've been trying to you know capture as much of it as I can because I wanted to try to do something with it later on but I've also noticed that one of my cats tries to leave the wall where I keep being taken out of like she's physically wa watch me go through it and is trying to figure out how to go outside she feels there's a portal there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, she saw you. She saw you. She saw you being teleported through the wall. So she said, Hey, daddy's going through that. I want to, I want to go too. <laughs> well, there's a slight chance she may have actually been a present from my family too. Well, just all of a sudden, I lived out in the country. So having stray cats stop by wasn't abnormal we usually set out a little bit of food and water for him to keep him around because it just helped keep mice away now only thing that seemed off about this cat is that she's a polydactyl and has eight toes on her front paws and for some reason she was awfully friendly towards me I mean, to where I would I would just sit down you know and try to get her attention and she'd just crawl up in my lap now I'm a bigger guy. I'm six foot seven. Usually takes animals a little bit to adjust, but then as I was doing some of the uh, sessions where I was trying to capture craft outside, and one thing I would do is try to have some sort of what they would call a spirit box because I noticed that whenever even the ET started showing up, it would react. There was a message that came across saying the cat is a gift from us. Please take care of her. I'm sure you were going to say that. That made so much sense. Yeah. Wow. 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 That's so beautiful. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, that's that's absolutely an incredible, inc an amazing, beautiful uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I I'm very very excited to share that with my audience and uh, you know um stories like this need to come out and um, you testify that about this war that has been going on about the rescue missions of the federation trying to rescue kids mm -hmm. um that's what Thorhan was part of it wasn't only his team there were many other teams rescuing kids mm -hmm. and uh that make all, makes all sense with uh, what what you tell meeting him reporting him and the three fingers thing i mean that i knew thorhan was was going to say yes 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 but before i ask him but you know i never i try never to and try to be objective and he went oh yes yes went, oh he's going to be happy <laughs> yeah um, I, was, I try to be objective too and it's like how Oh, there was only one way to test this, and that was reaching out. And yeah, that's apparently apparently we knew each other before I came down. So. Yeah, yeah, probably. So, uh, what's interesting um, is the you you mentioned the pod thing, waking up in the pod. So there's um there's this. this transfer of consciousness between your upstairs body and this one that is very interesting as well um it, it's like star seeds uh who go into a stasis um state to tr be able to transpose their consciousness to an incarnated body on earth 
And when the time is over for this body, the consciousness goes back into the body in the stasis spot. So maybe you saw what was going to happen in the future. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's been a couple incidents in my life where I had medical emergencies that I could have very well lost my life if people hadn't acted quickly enough. There, were, when I was about eleven, I actually went into renal failure on Thanksgiving of all days, ironically. And there was a point where I remembered kind of flickering between here and what I thought was the afterlife because over there I would see you know my great grandfather and just talking to a bunch of other relatives and when they would see me they're like what the heck are you doing here and all of a sudden it would seem like it would cycle I'd start getting to a certain pain threshold I'd pass out pop up with there come back and just repeat over and over until I got to the hospital and it was I don't know did I mess up this body so much that I can do things that I'm technically not supposed to am I gonna break something on my way I don't know <laughs> there's something you mentioned uh, earlier on um uh, that's um I think we weren't record we were not recording yet that would explain all the abilities that you have. Uh, this body has, this bloodline has. Um, you said that one of your ancestors were Mary Stewart. Mm -hmm. And the bloodline of Mary Stewart, it's not me saying that, I just reported it. Uh, there's been some gen genetic studies and historical studies. The bloodline of Mary Stewart goes back to Jesus who was an activated being and this bloodline it's it's the grail you know it goes back to the patriarchs adam and key and th th these people have tremendous ability psychic abilities of healing of psychic uh powers so that would explain why why around you as well you you are receptive to all these phenomena because you have this this in your blood in your genes. What mm -hmm. do you think? What do you say? <laughs> I would have no doubt because, interestingly enough, it's kind of going into the bloodlines and you know going to Adam and Eve when during the. Hatman took when I said whenever somebody would mention my name to the gentleman who got possessed, he would flinch. Mm. That kind of re reminded me of the stereotypical, you know, say Jesus and the demon will spaz out. It's your frequency. It's your genetic frequency that scares mm. demons or lower vibrational entities because oh. you're a threat for them. That's the genes we carry. That's the frequency we carry. It scares the dark. dark. Well, that tracks because I was there was a theory I was working on with the hat man that I may have figured out who he actually is, or at least the big bad, because he said to never work alone. One of the theories that was brought to me came through Brenton mythology about the Anku. And one of the versions I read about was that it was believed that one of the Anku was Cain, Adam's firstborn son. And ever since I mentioned that theory, that's when the attack started. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I know the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean there have been like i said there's been voice recordings that i caught where the people who were attacked in order they were attacked got mentioned there was also an, another part where it was almost like it was begging me it said quit hunting us <laughs> it's like ah, i do scare what? you game on 
like good luck <laughs> wow 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 well listen um that's um that's a fascinating testimony and um the the, the voice recordings are absolutely stunning um what else we you didn't mention that you would like to to mention you didn't think about i th think i covered everything i know so far <laughs> okay <laughs> that was, that was like the only other bit that's come up is that apparently about november of last year a new baby has come yes yeah, so one thing I've been meaning to ask you is that the other, older two children, yes, when they originally first showed up, they would show up as you know small children, but there's also been times where they've all shown up as full-grown adults. It's like once, so obviously once again, time travel a factor there, and it's just like okay, if you guys are coming down, am I going to have to explain to your grandmother that? Why you have, why she has grandkids that look like they could be the same age as her own children, or I don't know. <laughs> well, it's it's. Uh, I think we must not look at the things on a linear time as it is on Earth. You know, mm. you you know as well that up, upstairs they they come from another, not another time timeline, but from the future. The Federation arrived from two hundred years in the future here to uh deal with the problem on earth so you know the the the, the age of your kids uh when they contact you now they can contact you from different times of their their life from the time they were adult they are adult from the time they are kids making contact with you because it's like if they were contacting you back in time to stop you making mistakes, for instance, as you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. because you, you came for a mission. So all of this is very interesting. And I know you will get now that it's, I have this feeling that as we speak, you will get more. Um, cool. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, we, we may do a, a new, um, um, new video when you have new 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 clues and uh, see what comes from from all of this because it's absolutely exciting, <laughs> exciting and somewhat frightening all in the same turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, D Dakota, thank you so much for sharing with us your story. Uh, where, where can people find you? Can you tell us about website, channel, please? Oh, yes. You can find me on baldandbonkers.net. It has all sorts of information about the podcast and the company that helps surround it, as well as some of the projects we're working on. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Rumble. You can also find you can find podcast episodes in almost 70 different locations now. So just look, type in Bald and Bonkers on the search engine. You'll find us. Fantastic. What would be your words of wisdom or advice uh, to the people of Earth in these times, please? Don't give up. There's going to be a storm coming. But that always storm always comes when a change has to happen. Things are going to get chaotic. It might get scary at times, but don't give up. Something truly amazing is coming forward. And if anything, these crazy times we're in, the best times to probably chase things that you may have thought about doing, but may have been too scared. But just look at the last four years alone. Isn't that proof enough that anything is possible? Dakota Fransen, thank you. Thank you.
Olivia? Baby girl, is that you? You okay? Quality. I am looking right at a ship. I am looking right at a ship.